this is a man who really needs going to church. My so. Medit <laughs> has been an experimental science for the first 100,000 years of its uh, existence. For a long, long time, people noticed experimentally very deep facts. For example, that 2 plus 2 equals 1 plus 3. And they proved it empirically by taking specific sets, two bells and two bells, <laughs> you get the same thing as one bell and three bells, and two dogs and two dogs, and so on. So for a long time, mathematics was a nice empirical science. In ancient Egypt, ancient Babylonia, uh, you measured 90 degrees by having a 3 by 4 by 5 rectangle. And the new, that that's a good way to make 90 degrees. And there was no so-called proof. Then about 2,300 years ago, came a fellow called Euclid. And Euclid ruined mathematics <laughs> by turning it into a deductive science. And Euclid and his friends and colleagues ruined mathematics by establishing, by inventing the axiomatic method. And so entered the dark ages of <laughs> mathematics. You had the notion of proof, and proof meant rigorous proof. As I said, in the latest notices, somebody making fun of the phrase heuristic proof. And he said, heuristic proof is an oxymoron. How can a proof be heuristic? You either have a proof or you don't have a proof. This is complete nonsense. You have lots and lots of types of proofs. Heuristic proof is one of them, and on the other side is a formal proof. And to get a good proof, you usually don't need a formal proof. It just turns out that the statement for which we have so-called formal proofs is only a tiny, tiny fraction of the true statements that can be proved. We can only prove very, very little if we want completely rigorous proof. We have to be more flexible and take heuristic proof and do something that I coined about 15 years ago called semi-rigorous proof. And once again, a traditional mathematician would frown at the notion of semi-rigorous proof. A proof is either rigorous or non-rigorous. It's not even a proof. This duality, the Boolean mentality, complete black and white, I think was a big, did some good, but it did lots of harm. And now it is time to be more flexible and have lots of types of proofs, including the proofs in this t-shirt, <laughs> proof by intimidation. <laughs> so you have to be flexible and diversity and our lots of proofs. The reason that we have to change the outlook is, of course, the computer. Computers change everything. Computers were developed by pure mathematicians, Alan Turing, John von Neumann, and many other great mathematicians developed the foundations of computer science. Ironically, Pure mathematicians until very recently and to a large extent still today do not use the computer in a serious way. They do use it for email 
And nowadays also, if you are uh, under 60 or under 70 old, uh, to type your own paper. But they only use it as a typewriter. They do not use it as an essential research tool. And this should change. So the future of mathematics is in knowing how to program. So if you are a young student, you should definitely sign up to my experimental mathematics <laughs> class, in which you learn how to program. Even if you don't want to do the stuff that I do, whatever you're going to do, you're going to do much, much better if you know a little bit of programming. And Maple, the language that I'm using, is such a user-friendly, idiot-proof language that almost everybody, even a pure mathematician, can master it if they make the minimal effort. So, really, programming is the future. And what I do is experimental mathematics. The traditional approach to experimental mathematics was just an obvious extension of paper and pencil. People have been doing experimental mathematics for many, many years. Gauss, Riemann, if you look, Euler, Ramanujan, of course, if you look at the notebooks of all the great mathematicians, they have lots and lots of experimentations. And it's amazing what you could do without the computer. And often, when the publish, they don't mention it. But if you look at the notebooks, you find out they did lots and lots of experimentations. The myth that you just state the theorem and prove it step by step is, of course, a myth. To find new, important, and even not important discoveries in mathematics, you have to discover, get your hands dirty. And now, with a computer, we can be million times Ramanujan. Whatever Ramanujan can do, the computer, even you, can do much better and discover even more, even more amazing facts. So this is the obvious use of experimental mathematics of computers. As a calculator, but you can have very, very many digits. So numerical, with Many, many digits, not just 10 digits. And nowadays, as a symbolic calculator. Maple and Mathematica are computer algebra system. They know high school algebra really well. And lots of mathematics that is still being published today, not in pure mathematics or not, and journals, not in the annals of mathematics, or, but if you look at the more applied journals or in engineering, a lot of stuff still could be done much faster using routine calculations. So this is the obvious use of computers. It's just like a paper and pencil, but a million times more efficient. But this is the first use, very interesting, and you can make conjecture. You can make lots and lots of conjectures. For example, you can make the following conjecture. You can take 2 to the power, 2 to the power 0, and have 1, and get 3. Then you have 2 to the power, 2 to the power 1, and have 5. 